Hello everybody, it is August in Sag Harbor. We're very excited, we're gonna do another little segment on the California Dreaming Show. This show was really inspired by the work of Mark D'Alessio and Tina Orsalik D'Alessio when they went out and painted in California and we had intended on maybe taking a trip to California to add a few artists, but instead we actually went back to our core artists and found out who had painted in, in um, California. And one of our top plein air painters, top rated plein air painters in, the, um, in our whole lineup is Carl Bretzky. And we have some really cool pictures of Carl Bretzky right here by the window. I put them here because the light um, is really great here and you can get a real look at the range of values in his paintings, which is really why one of the miracles of Carl Bretzky's plein air painting is that he seems to be getting the value shifts absolutely perfect. And he also has a sense, a, a very, um, we call it like a happy hopper. <laughs> you know, Hopper, Edward Hopper's um, ability to capture America and Americana. He seems to be doing that, but in our time. Um, this is one of the best ones. This is, oh, I don't have the right glasses. Microbus on Pacific Coast Highway. It's a yellow VW bus for any of those of us who were alive in the 70s. That just says a whole thing. Um, that was the hipster thing to have. And um, uh, I want you to notice the, the, the prism effect in the sky here, but we're gonna talk about that with the next painting. Um, I also love this. A lot of my painters have painted the, these, um, I don't know what you call them, archway, natural archways, um, on the Pacific coast, but it really is only Carl who did it in scale. He shows you the scale by putting humans in it. There's a very human touch, a very humanist sensibility and a human touch to his paintings. Um, and I just think this is wonderful. Getting the light, the value shifts correct, and the composition is fun. And putting this character sitting out here on the corner, I don't know if you see that without the, the glare, um, just adds a little more, um, it's a little less grand. It's a little more um, human. And then this is a really beautiful picture. This is called Boys on the Rock, on, um, Boys on a Rock. And uh, it's a backlit, it looks like late evening or early morning, probably late evening. Um, I believe this is Malibu. Um, and it's almost without color. It really is uh, like a grisaille. And I've actually been looking at this painting for weeks and I only noticed the other group of boys that is very subtly placed in the background um, this weekend when I was talking about the painting. Um, but this captures a feeling and a moment. Uh, it's a very calming painting. It's getting a lot of attention. It's right here when you walk in. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be around for very long. <laughs> So um, Carl's, we are very lucky to have some work by Joe Paquette in the gallery, finally. Um, and Carl's teacher, one of Carl's teachers is a painter named Joe Paquette. And this is called Breathe Deep. And here we see a very masterful uh, prismatic palette effort. Um, when you look at the sky here, you see that there's almost no solid uh, horizon line because of the mist in the Pacific. You, you can feel the waves curling here, but I don't know if you can see it, but there's, uh, there's an aqua, there's a green, and then there's almost like a Prussian blue, and it's alternating. And that is actually what you see when you're looking at the Pacific, the, the greens and the blues. And he's done it really deftly and beautifully. Um, and this is a rare painting where you have a, a foreground, a middle ground, but I think the background is like the star of the show. I think that that, that rainbow effect from the, the solidness of the sea to the, the loftiness of the sky. Um, and you do, see, um, you do see the student here having a similar, uh, a similar kind of prismatic effect in the sky as the master or the teacher. I don't want to call anybody a master. Anyhow, so we're very happy we have um, another Joe Paquette in another place in the gallery. We'll, we'll uh, probably pop over and see that. But I also want to talk a little bit about Nelson White. Um, Nelson White is, was born in 1932, so in many ways he's the most, uh, certainly the most experienced painter in the gallery. 
This painting is just about California lifestyle. It was not painted in California. Um, this was painted in Via Reggio, Italy. But this is the signature painting um, subject matter of Nelson White. We've sold many of these red, red and yellow, um, orange and yellow umbrellas. Um, this is a masterful painting. He's using a palette knife to get the color on. It feels like butter in the, in the foreground here. And I painted for many, many, many uh, hours with Nelson over a couple of years. He was my painting instructor. And his primary concern in his paintings is making sure that the value of the sky, the water, and the sand makes sense. Um, and in the last 15, 20 years, he's done that, but charged up the colors. So we see really rich, rich jewel tones against each other. Um, this is just a really wonderful picture. And I put this, this might have been the only painting in this show that could stand up to the Darius Yektai painting called The Waxer. This is, um, uh, Darius has an art history degree and he's been painting for 25 years, but he doesn't have the same classical training as the other painters in the gallery. I'm very grateful that I found somebody who could be what I'm calling a crossover artist because I have a lot of clients that are looking for um, brighter colors and a um, uh, little bit less refined finish in some ways, but also something that's filled with energy. And this Derisecta is actually um, an oil stick on canvas, plus he's finished some of it with uh, acrylic, and then he puts a layer of resin on top. Um, many people may not know that Darius Sekta is an avid surfer, so he's painting something from his life here. And you'll see that he brought another one in that's unframed at the back, we'll show that to you. Um, but this was one of the first paintings to sell in the, in the show. And I put this next to Nelson White, because you can see how the vibrancy of color when you're out on the beach is speaking to both of these artists and they're taking it to a different place. Um, we also have five smaller new paintings by Nelson White here. This one in particular, I like to hold up next to here. You can see, they see the same in the sky and in the background. I think that is so cool that they've used the exact same lavender and purple. Um, and, uh, and that's, you know, only the artists see those colors. Um, this, these are his signature single umbrella paintings. These uh, frames are custom made in Pisa, right near Via Reggio. We love the contemporary design that's still hearkening back to the early American Impressionist framing. Um, this painting is a painting of a gunkwit that he made. He just made this one in May this year. Um, but one of the interesting things that happened is Christie's had two of his works. I think it was Christie's, right? Not Sotheby's. I don't remember. We're not sure. Either Christie's or Sotheby's, I think it was Christie's, had two works about this size that sold at auction for $6,000, which just so you know that these are 3,500 in our gallery. And then we noticed that they were at a big gallery in New York for 18,000. And this is something that happens when artists get up in age, sometimes bigger institutions swoop in and start to deal in their work because they, the expectation is that the value will go up at some point in the next 10 years. Um, but we are very happy to have another Gunquit painting by Nelson White. And this is just a wonderful delight. It's called At the Seaside Alba. Um, this is, um, again, very, very rich, little, sweet painting. It's only um, four by six inches. Um, and also rare, well, I mean, I don't know if you see, I think you got up there, there's, the horizon line is at the very, very top, which I think is a really interesting composition. Um, and it's rare because he doesn't really do a lot of figures to that degree of finish. Um, we, I just love this picture. We're gonna run to the back of the gallery now and I'm gonna show you the new uh, surfing, surfer painting. What is this called again? The leash wrapper. Oh, this is called the leash wrapper. It's a different set of, pa it's a different palette. You know, I'll get out of the way. It's a different palette, but it's done in the same series. And um, we're getting a lot of interest in this as well. Um, 
the colors, the, the composition, the brightness. It just makes people happy. <laughs> and this one's available? This one is available for sale. The other one is sold. This one's available for sale. And I think we have the Joe Paquette back here. This is um, the Joe Paquette. Um, I should bring it out into the light. Let me just do that. I'm going to put it in the skylight here. This is the Joe Paquette. Mm. You can really see it. Looks so good in light. Right? It looks so great. And here's one of those natural archways. Um, and this is a planner painting that he did on a trip out to California. It's called Incoming Tide Spooner's Cove. Incoming Tide Spooner's Cove. There you go. Again, the look at the sky from this kind of almost purple horizon line to a pale blue with the clouds just very loft, loftily put down there. And then he's got some impasto here where the, the waves are crashing in. I just think it's so cool. It's a masterful painting. Right. Anyhow, that's it. Was I short? Yeah. <laughs> okay, have a happy summer day. And we, we do have another couple um, little blurbs to do on this show, but um, it's going well. Come in and um, just a little bit of a, of a, what is it, a plug for Ben Fenske. He's actually coming here from Italy. He'll be here next, um, this Thursday, and he's gonna be having a show on the 29th. Mm -hmm. The 29th, we're not doing an opening, but his new paintings will be in the gallery as of the 24th or 25th, we'll be hanging the show. Okay, we'll talk more about these later. <laughs>